Colin Firth is making a splash in the movie A Single Man. In fact, he's said to be a leading contender for an Oscar as Best Actor. From Mark Phillips, A Sunday Profile. Some careers have a single point where they take off. For Colin Firth, it came with a splash. His portrayal of the reserved, brooding, and oh-so-eligible English country gentleman in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice won awards on both sides of the Atlantic. But it's a role that has haunted him, too, clung to him like a wet shirt. To his many fans, he will always be... Mr. Darcy. Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy in Pride and Prejudice... Mark Darcy. Maybe this was the mysterious Mr. Wright I'd been waiting my whole life to meet. Renee Zellweger's steady, if slightly boring, reluctant suitor. Maybe not. In the Bridget Jones Diary movies. You're up to something. And as a cabinet minister starring alongside a dog named Darcy. No, not again. In the British release St. Trinian's Girls Get Naughty at School movies. With that wet shirt again. Colin Firth has learned not to fight Darcy, but to use him. You see Colin Firth on the on the billboard for a while. You expected, I suppose, dripping shirts and and uh, and breeches and buttons. And, uh, That's true. And there is uh, you you get a brand attached to you sometimes, whether you invite it or not. Um, you you want to make a living, so you uh, a piece of success tends to bring other stuff in. But it's usually going to be stuff that's related to the thing that brought you success. Mm. Success is something Colin Firth can reflect on during yeah, a stroll a, um, through his West London neighborhood. Quite a lovely ghetto, actually. For it 25 is. years. On the stage, TV, Hitler. Hitler. and the movies, he's done nothing but work. But like all of London, it's, it strikes me how un-English it is. <laughs> you know, that you don't, uh, I would say at least half the population of this yep. Brussels district are... Yeah. Well, I'm not English. Guilty. Now, as we meet in his wife's London eco-fashion shop, bamboo towels or bottle-top bags, anyone? But just to watch he's the, rumored to be on the verge of one of showbiz's greatest on, prizes, so an Oscar nomination. Is it important for you to get the nomination? And, and if you were to win, would that be a good thing? Oh, <laughs> it would be a wonderful thing. Um, but it would only be a good thing for me. It's not going to help anybody else. <laughs> well, it'll you know, help the movie and the people involved with the movie and make everybody uh, who wishes me well very, very happy. The movie is A Single Man, a day in the life of a gay English professor in 60s Los Angeles whose longtime partner is killed in a car crash. I mean, if I died right now, it'll be okay. A single man by first-time director and fashion designer Tom Ford, otherwise known as the man who saved Gucci, is as meticulous dramatically as it is stylistically and has been a big hit on the festival circuit. Firth won the Best Actor Award at Venice. But he isn't the kind of guy to look too deeply into the mouth of awards, of which he's had a few, or to try to analyze his own success. No, I don't know what it is. Certainly don't, even less in myself. I do not know why I've been invited in. I don't know why it's worked when it's worked and it hasn't when it's had, and I've got some theories. Yeah, well, One of his theories is what he calls his neutral looks. Colin! A face on which characters can be painted. Goldilocks looks. Not too hot, not too cold. This from a guy who's been called the thinking woman's heartthrob. Do you need matinee idol looks? Is, I guess the best No, you don't. Question. You don't. I won't get anxious about it. Um, but it does... I mean, I'm... You know, I was by f a long way from being the best-looking boy in my class, even in my math class, let alone a drama school. So it's not... Um, it's not that. Maybe. But Colin Firth, now pushing 50 and the father of three, has made a career of variations on the Englishmen of a certain class thing. For a while, it seemed, his role in life was to lose glamorous women to other Englishmen. Yes, I did see her. To Hugh Grant in oh, the no, Bridget just, Jones just, movies. Would you step outside, please? Darcy, do you have any idea what century we actually live in? 
To both the Fines I'll brothers, you Joseph place. in Shakespeare in Love, sit down. Absolutely right. And to Rafe Fines in sorry. The English Patient. Sorry, I'm so sorry. If there seems to be a pattern here, Firth insists it wasn't deliberate. Um, no, for me, any associational baggage that I carry is the enemy, really. It's not, uh, it's not something I've, I've wanted to push. Because it interferes, you feel, in getting across the character that you're trying to portray. Yes, although I've learned that baggage can be useful in the end, and if you, you can't actually fight it, so you might as well uh, make use of it. Uh, it occurred to me a few years ago when I was doing a film called Where the Truth Lies. <laughs> Friend of mine. Which is a whodunit in which Firth plays a kind of anti-Darcy straight man alongside Kevin Bacon. Firth is another well-mannered Englishman just up to a point. Now, there's a scene where you see this character beat the crap out of somebody backstage. Just this way. You wouldn't be shocked if, if you saw Tony Soprano doing that. Mm. But the director was very interested in the idea of the p p perfect English gentleman doing it. Even though, if anybody who knows perfect English gentleman is not going to be that it's surprised to, 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 to see a violent streak there. I wanted to play an Italian-American, mm. you see, and he yeah. said, no, stick with the English thing. Or variations yeah. on the English thing. None stranger than the rollicking romp Abba Fest that was Mamma Mia, in which Firth joins Meryl Streep, Pierce Brosnan, and others in bravely going where none of them had gone before. It has to feel like a head night or a karaoke night or something. It's partly why they picked a bunch of actors who not oh, can't sing, can't sing or dance. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's what I like to think. It was, uh, you know, it, it, it was inclusive. Playing against type, I suppose, in that, in that sense. Yes, in a way. I mean, certainly there was nothing debonair or elegant or... And I don't think there was anything particularly repressed or restrained about this character, except that, well, he was. I mean, except we have to see him unbutton and break loose. Mm. Buttons have mattered to Colin Firth. He's very much buttoned up in the current mm -hmm. movie. And there were plenty of buttons in Pride and Prejudice. You know, between uh, jobs, I don't even really know how to dress. You know, I don't have... Because nobody's written it. Nobody's written it, nobody's dressed me, no one's uh, given me a persona. I go back to a rather uh, rough-edged, and I dare say rather sort of nebulous um, character. You know, I, 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 I think my family would know me. Um, <laughs> They'd they probably recognize me. Yes, exactly. And so will everybody else if the Oscar thing happens. All, all the way along, every time there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, a nomination or something nice is said, and people uh, feel happy. And if there's a disappointment, it's amazing how silent it all goes. 